Hello, this is my presentation for my part one of my school landscape project. For my observation, I went to an elementary school that we're going to name Gettysburg Elementary. In this presentation, I will focus on the demographics, both ethnically as well as the language demographics, and talk about how those work into the classroom that I observed. To start off, the demographics of Gettysburg Elementary are predominantly white with 62%. And the next largest ethnicity being Hispanic with 28%. There are other races present in the schools such as Asian, African American, multiracial, etc. I found this information on the district profiles website for Oregon that was provided to us through the course. Within the ELD classroom I observed there were all Hispanic students which makes sense seeing how that is the second biggest demographic. The languages that are spoken at Gettysburg Elementary are Spanish and English. English is spoken by teachers, staff, administration, students, and some families. Spanish is spoken by a few bilingual staff members, ELL students, their families, and maybe a few teachers. Bilingual staff are also present during any meetings or conferences with families who are predominantly Spanish speaking to ensure that communication is effective. However, the predominant language of the school is English. For this section, I felt it was important to focus on the printed language in the ELD classroom and school separately because while they are very similar, there are a few differences. Focusing on the ELD classroom first, there is a variety of languages within the text available to students. A few of the languages that I observed were Spanish, English, and Eastern European. There also were a few phrases along the walls that were greetings from different languages such as Spanish and Chinese. Other than that, everything else was in English, including the instruction and main curriculum. School-wide, however, the resources are mostly, if not all, in English. This includes posters, textbooks, and signs posted around the school. Some of the more important signs that parents may read are in Spanish as well, but those do not include many signs. One thing to note is that the school sends home important forms and newsletters in Spanish for Hispanic families to ensure that they understand what is going on around the school. Looking at student representation in the school, I saw that in the ELD classroom, there is a fair amount of representation of other cultures in the text available to them. However, in other classrooms, the resources are mostly in English and there is not much physical representation in the form of pictures that promote a diverse culture around the school. The classroom location is in a separate building from the main school building. The modular building that this classroom is in holds the upper elementary classes. I believe the reason for this is because there are so many classes for each grade and so many other rooms that are in use that it was a matter of what space is available. But even in the last year, the room has changed location from the main building to the modular building. So I don't think it is a location thing per se. I just, like I said, I think it's more this is what we have available, so we're going to move this classroom here. The format of this class is using the pull-out method. The kids are pulled out from their classrooms by grade level for one class period out of the day. There they learn grammar and English acquisition. Instruction is all in English. The ELD teacher is not able to speak Spanish, so she is not bilingual, but there is a bilingual staff member in the classroom at all times. The students are allowed to speak Spanish or whatever their native language may be whenever they want to or need to. So while their instruction is not in their native language, they are allowed to speak in their native language. A quick analysis of the classroom location on the effect it has on the instruction and the idea of supporting or deficit. Um, usually separation would promote a sense of deficit in the ELL students, making them feel like they cannot be a part of the mainstream classroom because they lack the language skills. However, by only having them in a separate classroom for a total of about 45 minutes, I believe that they are still able to be a part of their classrooms with their peers and instead they just receive specialized support in a smaller group setting to ensure that they are not being overlooked by other students. This program is ultimately an English-only program with structured English immersion. For this school, I do believe that this is the best program to have in place because they do not have access to a certified bilingual teacher, but they do have access to both a qualified ESL teacher as well as to quality ESL instructional materials. 
These are the pictures that I took of the classroom. Obviously, any faces of students are hidden. One thing that I really liked in the classroom was the rug that's pictured in the top left corner. Um, it was in the front of the classroom, and I felt like this rug effectively promotes a sense of diversity and acceptance of other cultures. It's not so much in your face, but it passively gets the message across to students to accept students and people of all cultures and to not look at anybody differently. Or not to not look at them differently, but to look at their differences and not think negatively of them. The classroom setup was fairly simple with tables and chairs to allow students to interact with peers at appropriate times and promote cooperative learning. That picture is on the bottom left corner. I also thought it was cool that they had a hall of fame for all the students past and present who had tested out of the program and were considered proficient. That picture is the bottom middle. I feel like this gives the students currently in the program something to work towards and help them feel a sense of fulfillment to have their name and picture on that wall. Also pictured on the far side of the slide are bookshelves that had a variety of resources in a variety of languages. Like I mentioned earlier, there was Spanish, English, Eastern European, and there may have been more, but those were the main ones that I got. I feel that despite the setup being simple, it was ultimately effective and the only thing that would have made it better, the classroom I mean, would have been more diversity of resources available around the room to promote cultural diversity, such as having more posters on the wall with different languages or have more posters of children of different cultures just to kind of give the students a sense that this classroom is a positive environment that's accepting of all cultures. Just a few connections to the course readings that I wanted to make is that I saw a few possible myths in the classroom that could possibly hinder some of the ELL's learning. The first myth that I thought about is the more English is better myth. I felt that this was present because the instruction is just in English. This is ultimately because the teacher is not bilingual and while that is not necessarily a hindrance, it could promote the idea to students that they should not speak their native language at home and then they may end up losing it altogether. An article that I found um, by Rao states in the article that um, decades of work confirms that learning is most effective when a child has 8 to 10 years of good teaching through the medium of the mother tongue, accompanied by a gradual introduction of other languages, first as subjects then partly also as teaching languages. Rao goes on to say that this ensures a solid cognitive foundation for learning non-language subjects. It allows acquisition of other languages while retaining and developing the mother tongue, and it results in better learning of other languages when compared to non-mother tongue teaching models. This just goes to show that if we promote this more English is better myth and mentality that students could ultimately lose their mother tongue or their native language, and I don't feel that that is something we should be promoting. I understand in the case of this classroom that the teacher can't speak Spanish but if it were me or I worked with this teacher I would maybe suggest that she acquires some sort of bilingual acquisition just to kind of speak their native language with them and kind of help them see that you know my native language is okay to speak and I can learn things in my native language so that they don't think that they can only learn in English. The next myth that I perceived is that speaking equals proficiency. One of the activities that they did while I observed was they were practicing uh, for the speech part of the ALPA, which is the English Language Proficiency Assessment. Proficiency is measured in a variety of ways, and it's important that students work on all of those ways and not just speaking. In my discussion post for week six, I discussed the premises present for building a responsive school climate for ELLs. The three that I attributed to this classroom are specialized instruction, leadership and advocacy, and building knowledge. I've discussed these three premises already throughout the presentation and how the school shows these three premises throughout the school, but I just wanted to attribute the examples to specific premises. Team teaching is also present to a certain degree within the ELD classroom through the use of a bilingual staff member. 
She is there to help the students if they need help explaining something or they don't understand something. She's also there to help the parents if they need to communicate with the teacher and they are not proficient in English. She isn't a teacher, so it's not exactly team teaching, but she does help educate the students through support through their native language, and I feel that that is definitely very beneficial to the students in this program. It just gives them that extra step towards acquiring the English language through the use of their native language. And finally, I wanted to point out a possible benefit to the pull-out method that is present at Gettysburg Elementary. As I stated before, I feel that this is the best method for this school with what they have available to them. I personally believe bilingual uh, education is probably one of the best methods. There's probably other opinions on that. But for this school, I do believe that this is the best method that they can use at the moment. And uh, Sol Soltero stresses the importance of ELLs having access to English-speaking peers by stating it to be especially important for the acquisition of academic English. Now, this just goes to show that one benefit to the pull-out method is that for the remainder of the day, the students have access to their English-speaking peers because they're not stuck in a class all day where they're learning English separately and they're not able to interact with native English-speaking peers who already have a pretty good acquisition of the English language. Soltero stresses the importance of this by saying that it is especially important for the acquisition of academic English and we've talked about how academic English and social English social English are very different from each other and ultimately in a classroom with their English speaking peers this is the only time that they're going to be able to work on their academic English because any other setting will promote the acquisition of social English or social language which like I said, is completely different. The acquisition of this type of English is already so slow to begin with, so by working with their English-speaking peers within their classroom and not just being stuck in a English language class all day, they can work towards the acquisition of English both socially and also academically. And this is the list of my references. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation. I hope it was insightful, and I hope you got a good glimpse into Gettysburg Elementary and the ELD program that they have in place there.